2006 seems to be a forgotten time in the history of Yu-Gi-Oh. However, it's for good reason. How do you improve on a game after the mind games and strategy that was in 2005 with Goat Control and 2007 with Airblade Turbo and the evolution of Monarchs, that being the perfect circle version? However, 2006 is interesting in that Monarchs finally got their chance to shine in a way that would forever give them the respect they deserved and would go on to be used for years to come. My name is Avery and this is a 2006 Monarch Format Retrospective. From the depths of defeat, from the will of determination, grows a new, more powerful force. The power of the duelist. With more Yu-Gi-Oh! GX cards than ever before, the new power from Neospace can help you reclaim the fame, King of Games. Power of the Duelist, Yu-Gi-Oh! Trading Card Game Booster Pack, available now. The beginning of 2006 served as a continuation of the October 2005 format, with the top decks still centering around mostly the same staple cards, and with Chaos Warrior Toolbox decks staying on top of the meta. One of the big changes, however, was the trend towards heavier and heavier trap lineups. While certain decks, most notably Monarchs, had been maxing out on Sakuratsu armor and running widespread ruin since late 2005, the tournaments in early 06 began to see this trend spread out to the larger pool of decks. The format would further change with the introduction of Treeborn Frog in February of 2006 in the Shadow of Infinity booster set. This was able to operate as extremely persistent tribute fodder, therefore making Monarchs significantly easier to summon. This caused a shift in the meta towards main deck Monarchs being far more popular due to how much easier they became to summon. One interesting thing that you were able to do with Treeborn Frog back in the day, but since a ruling change on Treeborn Frog, you can no longer do this, is that in the standby phase, Treeborn Treeborn Frog would constantly try to special summon itself. If you have a card like Enemy Controller, when Treeborn Frog summons itself in the standby phase, you can activate Enemy Controller, tributing the Treeborn Frog, and use the effect of Enemy Controller to take control of an opponent's monster. Since it's still in the standby phase, Treeborn Frog then resummons itself back out. Later on in the history of Yu-Gi-Oh! when we get Light and Darkness Dragon, Treeborn... 3, 2, 1... Later on in the history of Yu-Gi-Oh! when we got Light and Darkness Dragon in 2007, Treeborn Frog was actually an out to the four negates that it had because you could just constantly spam its effect over and over again in the standby phase. Unfortunately now, due to ruling changes over the years, that is no longer the case. You just get the one chance and then you have to wait until your next standby phase. It was during the rise in popularity of Monarchs that the decks started to move more towards Zayborg as the archetypal Monarch instead of Mobius. As Zayborg could destroy a monster on summon, he fit in much better with the increasingly destruction based meta that had been building since October of 05. However, despite the newly increased popularity of Monarchs, the cookie cutter Chaos Warrior Toolbox decks still reign supreme. Try saying that 10 times fast. This early 2006 format also saw the introduction of a deck that would shape the meta going forward, Stein OTK. Cyber Stein was originally a prize card, meaning that it was prohibitively difficult for most players to get. However, the card was reprinted as a rare in Dark Beginning 2 in early 2005. The prevalence of Metamorphosis in the 2005 meta, however, made Cyber Stein relatively superfluous, as many of the most useful fusion monsters available at the time could be summoned at a much lower cost than they could with Cyber Stein. The limiting of Metamorphosis in October of 2005 would begin to pave the way for Stein to enter the meta. The first iterations of the deck were focused around the Stein OTK combo. This combo focused on using Cyber Stein to summon out Cyber Twin or Cyber End Dragon and then equipping it with Megamorph to OTK the opponent. The format would shift away from Warriors with the April 2006 Forbidden list. This list made some significant shakeups to the meta, most notably a limit to DD Assailant, the core monster in Warrior Toolbox decks. The newly introduced Treeborn Frog and Pot of Avarice would also see themselves get limited. Treeborn Frog had already rapidly proven itself as a staple for summoning out Monarch monsters, while Pot of Avarice had become extremely easy to exploit as an effective Pot of Greed, due to the ease with which monsters could be loaded into the graveyard using Magical Merchant. Up to this point, Magical Merchant had grown to be a very common staple in a large portion of decks of the format due to both its ability to generate advantage on flipping while also making Pot of Avarice almost instantly usable. 
In the wake of this new list, the meta wouldn't shift radically, but the top decks would start to move away from using the Warrior Engine. In its place, top decks started to run more dedicated Chaos builds, as well as introducing a new key card that would define the top deck of this format, Return from the Different Dimension. This card was able to be used in tandem with three copies of Chaos Sorcerer, which could fill the Banish Zone, allowing a well-timed Return from the Different Dimension to completely flood the field and finish off the opponent out of nowhere. The new variant of Chaos, dubbed Chaos Return, would only almost immediately make an impact on the format by winning the first Shonen Jump Championship after the April Forbidden list went into effect. The deck would go on to dominate the format, taking over the new top form of Chaos. For the most part, the deck was very similar to Cookie Cutter Chaos Warrior Toolbox, again, try and say that name 10 times fast, from the prior format with some minor adjustments. The first of these was the introduction of a new core Monarch monster to the meta. While Mobius had been the main Monarch before the April Forbidden list, afterwards a somewhat lesser used Monarch shot into the spotlight that being Zayborg the Thunder Monarch. Zayborg saw a spike in prominence for a variety of reasons. First of all, the April list had brought Mirror Force back into the game. This made the emphasis on running an extremely high count of battle traps less important, as Mirror Force could just do the same job as several of the weaker traps, making the back row removal Mobius offered less crucial. Chaos Sorcerer's uptick in usage also made monster removal much more important while also making light monsters to summon him with more in demand. These factors together led to the rise in prominence of Zayborg as the new key Monarch monster. Unlike Mobius, which saw use in more dedicated Monarch decks and mostly side deck usage outside of that, Zayborg would see usage at one or two copies in the main deck of almost every prominent meta deck of this format. Some further shifts in the staple pool also occurred during the new April 2006 format. The first of these was the continuing increased usage of Cyber Dragon. While Cyber Dragon had seen continuous use in almost all major meta decks since the end of GOAT format, he had commonly been run only at two copies. However, with the much more focused nature of Chaos Return, Cyber Dragon started to see very common usage at three copies. Another card that started to see more mainstream use during this format was Dekoichi the Battle Chanted Locomotive. This card had definitely seen use in Monarch decks and in various Chaos decks before the April Forbidden list, but the shift towards getting out Chaos Sorcerer as fast as possible led to many lists starting to run Dekoichi at three copies. He was very useful as he would both serve as a dark target for summoning Chaos Sorcerer while also making sure that when he was destroyed, his controller wouldn't lose any card advantage. The other major deck of this format was Monarch Control. This deck was a natural evolution of the Monarch decks that had seen some success in the previous format, focusing on the same types of strategies. The deck also was very much a variant of Chaos as the widespread adoption of Zay Borg and standard Chaos Return decks meant that the core difference was often the focus on Tribute Summoning in Monarchs versus Summoning Chaos Sorcerer and Chaos Return. The new iteration of the deck still relied heavily on using Flip Effect Monsters to manage its resources while using both Treeborn Frog and Spirit Reaper to maintain board presence and Tribute Fodder. One of the key new techs that Monarchs started to adopt during this period was Soul Exchange. While Soul Exchange had been around since the beginning of the game, being released in Starter Deck Yugi, it had never really seen much competitive usage up to this point. However, the newly found emphasis on monster removal and a need for easy tribute fodder to summon out Zayborg and Mobius led to Soul Exchange gaining some traction in Monarch decks. It didn't, however, see the widespread usage in Monarchs that it would later. This was largely because Monarchs at this point were still largely a Chaos variant and therefore didn't need to focus as heavily on getting Monarch monsters out as fast and as often as possible when Chaos Sorcerer was generally more viable removal option. Along with these two decks, one other deck managed to stay on as a somewhat relevant force in the meta, that being Stein OTK. So while Stein OTK had been lurking in the background of the meta since early on in 2006 and even in late 05, the dedicated OTK variant of the deck had never really caught on in the meta. However, the newfound popularity of Zaybor combined with the use of an older OTK enabler from back in the Magical Scientist days brought the deck back. This older card was Last Will. Last Will allowed for a Zayborg and Cyberstein OTK combo. The combo required the player to have Last Will, and a Zayborg would tribute fodder for it. The Zayborg would be tribute summoned, clearing out the opponent's monster, and then Last Will would be activated, seeing as a monster was sent to the grave to tribute summon Zayborg, Last Will could summon out any 1500 or less attack monster from the deck, namely Cyberstein. Cyberstein would then summon Cyber Twin Dragon, which together with Zayborg could direct attack an opponent for exactly 8 
50,000 points of damage. This combo would really start to catch on in June of 06 during national season. Most notably, Calvin Tassong would main deck this combo in his Chaos Return deck, winning him the Canadian Nationals. What was perhaps the most powerful part of this combo was that it only required two cards, a single Cyberstein and a single Last Will to be run to enable it. This easy access to a devastating and easily game-winning combo made it a near staple in almost every top 8 deck for the rest of the format. All decks would either be main decking the cards or side decking them depending on their matchup as the combo, while powerful, was very susceptible to any kind of burn or aggressive beatdown due to the extremely high life point cost of Cyberstein. The last thing of note during this format was the fate of Warrior Toolbox. While the engine had dominated the October 2005 Forbidden List meta, the limiting of DD Assailant had definitely put the brakes on the deck's rulership of the meta. The engine would survive, albeit in a reduced and less popular form. The new version of the Warrior Toolbox deck now consisted of a single copy each of DD Warrior Lady, a DD Assailant, Exiled Force, and Don's Lug, depending on the build, Blade Knight and or Mystic Swordsman level 2 as well. These monsters were usually coupled with a single copy of Reinforcement of the Army, although some builds still opt to run two copies. While the strength of Warriors as an engine had definitely waned, they had not really lost in popularity overall as a deck. A much more dedicated Warrior variant rose up in the April 2006 format, referred to as Rat Box. The Rat Box version of the deck often strayed away from Chaos Elements and focused more on Earth Attribute Warriors to win games. This variant focused on on utilizing Giant Rat to toolbox out various different warriors in a very similar manner to how Tomato Control used Mystic Tomato to summon out a variety of dark monsters. While Rat Box saw relatively wide usage at the local level, it never quite made a serious impact on the meta during 2006, only managing to get one SJC Top 8. The 2006 Chaos Return format finally ended with a September ban list, which made Chaos Sorcerer forbidden. This forbidden list was particularly notable because it marked the Chaos Return format as a shorter format due to the changing of the dates of when forbidden Forbidden and Limited lists would be released in the TCG. Previously, they were released every six months in April and October. However, the September 06 Forbidden list marked a shift to them being released in March and September in order to better align with when the Forbidden lists were released over in the OCG. This list also saw Spirit Reaper getting limited, a card that had seen an essential staple status almost unbroken since the end of GOAT format. The new format that emerged from this list had itself squarely centered around what was now easily one of the most powerful cards left in the TCG. Cyberstein. While Cyberstein had been seeing widespread usage before the September 2006 list, afterwards Monarch Control took over the top dog in the meta, and by extension, the Zayborg slash Last Will combo became more and more dominant. Now that Monarchs had finally risen to the top of the meta, a few further changes started to appear in the way the deck was built. These changes were mainly pioneered by Lazaro Belito, who got top 8 at SJC Boston near the beginning of the format, and Ryan Spicer at SJC Austin soon after. This new variant of Monarchs, dubbed Lazaro Zaro Spicer Monarchs rethought some of how Monarchs had previously been built. While before Monarchs had largely been focused on using battle traps in order to protect flip monsters, now the deck was focused much more on utilizing a large number of floaters for tribute fodder. These floaters included the Apprentice Magician Engine as well as Mystic Tomato in order to complement the already run Treeborn Frog. These decks also switched their Monarch lineups to be much more aggressive. While before Monarch players would run 3 to 5 Monarchs, usually some mix of Zayborg and Mobius, Lazaro and Spicer switched over to aggressive running two to three copies of Zayborg and Thestalos. This caused the deck to have a much higher power output as well as put much more raw pressure on an opponent. The new iteration of Monarch Control also took great advantage of three spell cards that had seen variable usage up to this format but had never been used as part of a coordinated strategy. Creature Swap, Brain Control, and Soul Exchange. Creature Swap was an extremely powerful card due to its ability to give an opponent a floater, such as Treeborn Frog or Mystic Tomato, and then destroy that monster without having to wait a full turn. This would allow the deck to move at a much faster pace and generate much faster field advantage. Brain Control and Soul Exchange both served to help get additional tribute fodder for the Monarch monsters, while also still serving as a form of removal for an opponent's monster, clearing them away to summon a player's own powerful Monarch monster. The other common engine that got played during this period, most notably by SJC Boston winner Bobby Chang, Members, was a Gravekeeper Spy. Gravekeeper Spy was put in decks to fill a very similar purpose to Apprentice Magician, providing a floater to the deck. However, Spy was a somewhat popular alternative due to its much higher defense, making it possible for the monsters to survive a turn in addition to floating into a new copy of itself. 
These decks also made a common habit of using a transformative Stein OTK side deck. Even more so than before, Lazaro Spicer Monarch decks would run the key engine pieces of Stein OTK in their side deck and switch to them in later games. This is one of the first notable competitive occurrences of so-called smokescreen strategies, where a player runs one deck but can switch their core strategy in later games of the match by using their side deck. Think of something more recent several years ago like Chainburn side decking into an Insector engine. The new Lazaro Spicer Monarchs would continue to dominate the large events of the format until mid-November when a new booster set, Cyber Dark Impact, was released. Still to this day, many people will argue is one of the worst sets in Yu-Gi-Oh! of all time. This set introduced a new burn card called Chain Strike, which became the basis of a new deck known as Ship Burn. <clears throat> Excuse me, I meant Chain Burn. This deck was a much more powerful variant of the stall burn decks that had been around in the competitive scene since GOAT format. While it didn't diverge too much from its predecessors, it did use Accumulated Fortune, Jar of Greed, and other such generic draw cards to considerably boost its consistency, such that it didn't have to rely on lengthy stall strategies and could instead focus on quickly drawing into the combo pieces it needed to win. The rise and prevalence of Chain Burn would both weaken the potency of Stein OTK strategies by quickly depleting their life points to the point where Stein couldn't use its effect while all also not playing into the battle-dependent nature of Lazaro Spicer Monarchs as Chamber didn't play very many monsters. The last deck that started to gain some traction in this format was Dark World. Dark World at the time was a relatively small archetype focused around monsters that would special summon themselves when discarded from the hand. This became a particularly potent meta call with the advent of Lazaro Spicer Monarchs due to that deck's common usage of Thestalos to discard from an opponent's hand, on top of the already common use of Confiscation as a staple spell card of many decks. In addition to serving as a meta call to the rise and discard effects, Dark World decks also had access to Dark World Lightning, which could both remove an opponent's back row, something that was still somewhat limited due to all the key back row removal spells being limited or banned, and also trigger the summons of Dark World monsters. Finally, Dark World decks had the ability to use Deck Devastation Virus, which could very easily destroy an opponent's ability to build up a field presence with their smaller monsters such as Apprentice Magician and Spirit Reaper. Although the end of 2006 had served as the first monarch-dominated format, it was decidedly more dominated by the extreme power of Cyberstein itself. To this end, Cyberstein was moved from Unlimited to Forbidden in December as part of the first true emergency ban list in the TCG. Cyberstein would get one more spin before being locked away for good, taking first place at SJC San Jose, the last high-level event of 2006. But now, we love Cyberstein, and it was played in a Monarch deck that was deadly consistent and honestly deadly fun to play from what I've played of it on the DS games, and now we have Cyberstein back, and no one plays it because it's just not that good anymore. So ladies and gentlemen, I hope that you enjoyed that retrospective. It's been a while since we've put one out on the channel if you've been sub to the channel and keeping up with all of our uploads. But I thought that this would be a fun one to do. It's a format that I feel isn't really talked about all that much. And when I was doing research into this, I had forgotten that Monarchs had really been a good tier one deck for a time. And the fact that you had good cards like Confiscation and then Monarchs were able to also play a Cyberstein engine, it was just the best of both worlds, being able to have Monarchs and then also Cyberstein to attack for game. It's a lot of fun. I've actually been playing uh, Monarchs on the old World Championship DS games, and it's definitely fun. It's very, very fun. So guys, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.